Hey guys, this is Echo Sourix, and you're checking out a first look video on ADSR. In this video, we're going to be checking out the new plugin called Kick 2 from Sonic Academy. Now, this is a follow up to an earlier version of this drum synth drum module that they created called Kick. And like the name suggests, <laughs> it's for creating kick sounds. Now, with the release of version 2, you can do a lot more with that than just create kick sounds. And there are a lot of new features added on the new version, and we're going to go over those in this video. So this is by no means a how to use Kick 2 full tutorial. That would be a lot longer than a 10 to 15 minute YouTube tutorial. But I'm going to cover some of the features that I thought were really useful and cool and that were rolled out in the second iteration of the plugin. Now, what you see here is the main window. And this, this is similar to Kick 1. And I'll pull up while we do this. Let's pull up Kick 1 just for the heck of it so we can see the difference. So Sonic Academy... We'll do kick. Now, the, the difference in interface to me is striking. Uh, let me get the uh, first window down. So you can't resize it, which is, I guess it's not a huge issue, but uh, here's kick one. A huge difference, I think, in the GUI. And the GUI on kick two is laid out, I think, a lot more, uh, just a lot, it's just a lot easier to use, a lot easier to navigate, makes more sense. And the, the, it's just everything's more professional, it's just better looking, and it's a lot of fun to use. This one, you have the same features here, but you just don't have all of the cool visual representation that you do in Kick 2. So Kick 2, you actually can see the waveform of your sub, you can see the waveform of your clicks, you can see a lot more information, which gives you a lot more control over editing. Now you'll notice in Kick 1, you have one click sound, and in Kick 2, you have three click sounds, or three spaces to put click sounds. Now with kick one, you have volume and pitch and that's it. With kick two, you have pitch, length, start time, you have low pass and high pass and pan and a volume slider. So it's really cool. Now let's get off of kick one and back to kick two. So this main window is where you'll be editing most of your parameters. There are some embedded kind of double editing windows within kick two that gives you more control over the editing, but you really don't have to leave this main page. For instance, let's say you wanted to take out some of the low. You can, you can do that with your EQ here. Now, you can also hit edit and you can use different presets on the EQs. You can do a lot of different stuff. There's actually a full-fledged equalizer now. So, so you can see if I move the high mid, the low mid, if I have any of those bands active, on this preset, it will allow you to change those without having to go to that pit to actually not, you don't have to leave your pitch or your amp or any of the windows. You can do it with the four band EQ here, or you can go hit edit and you have a full equalizer. And with the preset here, what I would do is I would actually zero out of all of this. And I would do this straight away if you're going to use kick. Um, I would make a few different bands. Let's turn all these off and let's just go to the default preset. And what we're going to do here is we're going to turn on all of the different bands and I would just leave those on, right? Just like that. And then what you can do here is I would save this as a preset and I would just call this like active or whatever you want, hit save. And then when you're editing different parameters, that'll allow you not to have to leave necessarily. You, you can have more control over everything. You can, here's your low, right? So if I wanted to scoop out some of the, the low end, it's pretty easy. If I wanted to change the Q factor and that sort of stuff, I could, but this would be a generally a good way to go about it. So you can save your own EQ curves, which I think is brilliant, because then if I want to you know, cut a little bit of the high, maybe the click tick or the click sounds a little bit too much, I can do that. I don't have to go to this edit window. I can just do it from right here. Right, so that's really cool. You can double click to get the controls to go back to their default position. Now, a huge difference obviously was, was just the general presentation in GUI compared to Kick 1. If you don't know what Kick 1 is or Kick 2 is, let me, I guess I'll, I'll spend some time explaining that for people who don't know. Kick 2 is essentially a synthesizer or drum module that allows you to create kick sounds. It was geared for EDM and other types of like pop, that sort of stuff. And it allows you to just quickly, easily create tuned kick drums. That was the whole idea. 
And the way in which it did it was it looks at the kind of individual recipe elements of a kick. And those are, for most kicks, are going to be a click, a kick click or a kick tick, as some people call it. Sonic Academy Kick 2, they call it the click. So we'll call it the click here on out. There's the click, there's the body, there's the sub, and the tail with most kick samples. And you can isolate these on any sample. The click is going to be what gives you that high frequency punch to come through the mix. The body is actually the main girth width kind of the thickness of the kick, the thud. And then you have the sub, which is the subtonal element, the frequency, the harmonic that gives it its perceived pitch. Now, kick two, what it easily excels at is creating tuned kicks for your, for your production. So if you're working in a key of like F sharp minor and you have a kick sample you really like, you have to tune that with equalization and some other methods. Well, with kick two, you can just go in and make a kick that's tuned to your key. It's really easy to do. Now, this main editing window now shows you the sub view, and here's your sub harmonic view. If you click off of this right here, it'll just give you the pitch much like your pitch controls, much like kick one did. You can also see what's going on with your, your clicks. And you can zoom in over here using the zoom controls. So if you want to see what's happening with that, you can. Now that's pretty cool because you can actually, if you have more than one click loaded up, if you click on the click view, you'll see that there's yellow and green now indicating that we are looking at both clicks one and two. And then if we had the third click in there, it would, there'd be a red one as well. So that, I think that's really cool. The, the visual representation is just so much slicker with version two. It makes using the plugin a lot more fun and a lot easier actually. So in this main window, this is where you can control the pitch. Right, you can do a lot with this. And right now what we're affecting here because we're on the sub view, we're affecting the control of the sub, kind of like the sub oscillator down here for all intents and purposes. Now they've added a lot of new features to the sub. You can actually load up different waveforms. So we could load up like a square wave, which is really nice because, let me go to the default preset real quick. Like if you want to do a really aggressive kind of an 808 or maybe a main room type kick, you can get those frequencies, those pitches. Those different waves in there it's kind of like a wavetable blend almost because it still keeps the sign sound a little bit and as you boost the harmonics it's kind of like wavetable shaping it's adding that in but that's a really nice feature you have the volume slider down here you even have a pan which is more control than you really need on the sub which is nice then you have a key tracking here on all of the individual i kind of look at these as different oscillators you have three click oscillators which you can load samples into and then you have your sub oscillator and then here's all the editing window our parameters for those different oscillators Things like envelopes, that sort of stuff. So if you're a synth guy, that's one way to look at it. Now you can solo each individual element, like the sub or the clicks. You can mute them. You uh, you have a phase control. You have a the key track here, which is really cool. So if you want to do like 808s and rolls and pitches and all that, maybe you have a maybe you're doing like a main room progression. You want to go. You want it to follow your pitch. You can do that, which is really cool. All right, so let's go Let's go up, up here to the uh, preset browser. There's so many presets that come with it. There's pretty much every genre analog. There's some really good 808 emulations, which is really cool. You have 909, you have Progressive House, which is really nice. You have even some snares. Now this is basically, these sounds are essentially just coming from the clicks. We're gonna touch on those. The click generators are now almost fully fledged little samplers that you can drag and drop into, which I think is lovely. And then you also have, going back over here, you have pitch amp controls. So this will be what part of your, if we go back, let's go to the uh, analog sound. If we go to the pitch, so here's the pitch. Let's say we wanted to tune this, get it in like F sharp. There's F sharp for that section of it. Here's F sharp for this part of the sub. Do F sharp right there. And then for the tail, we'll do F sharp down here, and we'll even do up here at the top. Let's do F sharp. Okay, so if we play this, that's gonna be, if I load it up an analyzer, that will be in a F sharp key. It's that easy to pitch. Now, if we mute the sub, right, we have this click. Well, if we go to the click view here and we take the sub view off, this should all be also working in the range of the pitch that we, that we selected earlier in the other editor. And you can have it snap, you can have it, you can tag things. There's just a lot of stuff. If you have the tags off, it won't show you what the pitch is. Tags on, it'll show you the different pitch, the different hertz that they're occurring at. 
and then you can snap it to your key, which is really nice. Now, if you go to the amp, you can control the different sections of the kick. So let's unmute the sub. So let's say we wanted a t like a long attack time. Right, we can take out the initial part of the kick. None of this is very musical. I'm just showing you how much control you have over it. You have controls over really the start, the attack, the decay, the body, the tail, really everything you want. Like that's just a really good snappy like kick that doesn't have a tail if you wanted to layer that. There's some really cool elements. Now let's say you make the perfect kick sound that you love. Let's go to a progressive house one. Let's say you just love this kick. Like this one. And let's say you're just like, I'm gonna use this a lot. Well, what you could do is you could just really easily, you could obviously save the preset, but if you like working with audio, there's now a render control. So you can generate this, set your key here, and you can export it, which is really nice. You have a velocity. So if we export this, we can just export it as a sample. So if you work in a lot of like similar keys, like maybe the same four or five keys, and you have this kick, you can just go into your pitch and change the pitch and then render, and then you have your favorite kick as audio, which is a really cool feature to add. Now, doubling back over to this window over here, right past the EQ gain, we already touched on the equalizer. They added in kick two, Sonic Academy added three modes of distortion, which is really nice. Let me turn this down as I do this. Let's turn off the click ticks. So you have wave shaping, tube, and clip, which is really nice. You can copy and paste. There's a lot of controls. Then you have your drive control, just like you did on kick one. And you have a compressor, which is really cool. All right, let's go over to the click section because this is where a lot of uh, new features were integrated and released. So we're going to go back to the uh, default preset. Now, in version one, you had one click tick or one click, and you could load it up through hitting the drop down window to load up different kick ticks. And you'd have to make those in your DAW and then import them as you went. Well, with the release of Kick 2, you can just drag and drop this into your sample. So you can, you can take a sample and drag and drop, which is awesome. So here's a really cool snare that I made that I'm, I'm obsessed with lately. So I can, just click, I can just drag this into Kick, and now it says JU Snare, JU Snare 17. And now if I play this, let's, let's just solo this. There is the actual sample in its full length, which is really cool. Now you have pitch control, which is nice, right? You have length. Let's say you don't, maybe you don't like the tail of it or it's too long, you control it. You have a start point. And then you have a low pass, high pass filter, volume slider, and a pan slider. And you can load straight from the browser, so you don't have to drag and drop like I just did. You can navigate to your samples straight within the Kick 2 window and browser, never have to leave your DAW, which is really nice. So that touches on the bulk of the new elements inside of Kick 2. There's a lot more. I could probably spend 30, 40 minutes talking about this, but if you guys haven't checked that out, check this plugin out. You need, to, you need to. It's a game changer for a lot of different genres, a lot of different types of productions. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I'm Echo Soundworks. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.